Hey, what's going on, guys? Luke here from Nerdy Geek Talk, the source of all your nerdy geeky needs. And joining me today is Aramis Prime. Hi, Eric. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I thought we are in trouble, but we're good. We're good. Oh, okay. That's good. Oh, come on! You didn't even get... I, I thought that was clever. No, I didn't. What, what was the joke? I probably got the... Oh, I probably got the quote wrong from, like, the, the first solo trailer. Where he's like, I thought we were in trouble, but we're good now. We're oh, fine. Fine. oh, 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 okay. oh, oh, I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's okay, it's okay. You're forgiven. Uh, John isn't here again, because sadly, we, we record at the same time as Mandalore Mandate, so he's just not here, but that's okay. Um, but the two episodes we have to discuss this week are Season 1, Episode 13, and Episode 14, which are Jedi Crash and Defenders of Peace. Uh, basically, um, Ala Secura versus the Lemurs. Yeah. That's a great title. That's what this is called now. Ala Secura versus the Lemurs. All right. Um, so, the quote for the... Fr- well, actually, I, was, I guess we'll do a brief overview. So, uh, Jedi Crash. There, there, There's a battle in space. Ala Secura is battling in space. A Star Wars, if you would. Yes. Um, and and they're, they're getting beat bad. Not by an actual general or anything. Like, you know, the Separatists almost always have, like, one organic being who is a general in charge of all the droids. But no, they're just getting beat by a tactical droid. Which is like, why don't they just make more tactical droid if they do better than the real generals? But anyways, um, they're getting crushed and Ala Secura is about to die. They're like, oh no, this ship is going down. Like, we're going to die. Better send in our best fighter. Anakin gets there, like, last minute. He's like, yeah. Take some gunships, and they, they go down. They save Air Secura, and they're like, yay, let's get out of here. And then they get in a ship, and then somehow... Okay, hold on. Are we going to go through the episode in more detail? Yeah, I hope. yeah, yeah, we are. Okay, no, I'm just I'll save my detail. ranting. Then somehow the, the ship goes into light speed. I don't know how. I'm confused about that, but um, it goes into light speed, and they almost crash into a star, but they yes. don't. Then they crash on a planet. And uh, An- Anakin, oh, Anakin was also uh, injured while they were escaping. Uh, we'll get into what it reminds me of later. But, um, uh, yeah, so he's not doing so hot, and uh, he's, he's kind of, like, dying, and they crashed on the planet, and then they're like, hey, let's, uh, let's, let's go get medical help. And they go find some lemurs, and they, they bring <laughs> the lemur back to heal Anakin. Uh, no, and the lemurs live in beehives. Yes. Yes, they do. But... Uh, that's about it for the first episode. Uh, so, going in, in detail, a quote. First off, greed and fear of law. Lo- greed and fear of loss are the roots that lead to the tree of evil. Are they speaking about the giant tree that we see in this episode? Is that the tree of evil? Yep, that's why I try crushing people. I knew it. I knew it. No, but I mean, this one is pretty relevant. Although I don't get the greed. I don't. I. I don't know where that came from. But the fear of loss. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with this one. I mean, I kind of see how it's meant to be relevant, but I don't think it's really rel. I don't think it's really that relevant because I don't think that uh, being afraid that Anakin's gonna die made Ahsoka evil. Just putting that out there. But uh, no, that, yeah. that was the son that did that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. How do you feel about the quote? Do you think that or? I, I think that's kind of stupid because, like, even in the episode, Ahsoka's like, "Hey, like." How does it work with attachments to people? How how do we do that? And there wasn't a really good answer, but um, yeah, we'll get to that though when they debate that later. But uh, first off, I have to go say rocket droids are cool. They're just super yeah. bad droids with like rocket arms and white stripes. But hey, they're cool. Do they ever show up again? Who knows? They they might. I'm trying to. Th- I don't know if I remember them being in anything else, but I feel like they may have shown up more than once. We'll have to see. I like. I like that their main battling style is just kamikaze. Yeah, they're just like, just hit stuff and blow stuff up and yeah. Except that you're going to die. Um, and they also, <laughs> this was very interesting. I, I was not expecting this. Um, one gets on top, like, they, several of them just hit the cockpit of one of the, of the yep. one that's driving the gum ship, which Anakin just leaps off of. But um, several hit the oh. cockpit and then it smashes. And then one of them walks up behind it and rips off the cockpit. Why doesn't he just shoot him? Like, why doesn't the super battle droid just shoot through the cockpit? It's already cracked like crazy. If you shoot a rocket, know. it would blow up the ship. I'm just saying. But he, he, rips off he the didn't want to die. He was the only <laughs> one that didn't want to die. He ripped off the cockpit, and then the pilot just kind of like looks at him, like, oh, and jumps out of the ship and gets caught by the people in the main in the back. Yeah, I like how they just had that planned. Like, yep, this is one of our safety procedures. 
I don't know. I don't know, but I just I was like, oh god, he's jumping out. Oh, he got caught. It was like, okay. And then the the ship magically lands. I guess maybe the clone put in the trajectory for the hole in the ship that they were aiming for. It magically lands oh, in there. Let's th okay. Let's not ignore. Anakin jumped out of the ship. I feel it like was that was falling pretty. A anakin. couple hundred miles an hour. Well, he jumped right onto a droid, though. In all fairness, one of the rocket droids, like that. Like it was it was pretty instant that he landed on the droid. Now. He piloted that droid pretty darn well for being another, for being an antagonistic force that was trying to stop him, but... It should just self-destruct. It's a good point. Why don't droids have that? Um, but yeah, then we get uh, <laughs> the tactical droid, which is interesting. I find it very interesting that the <laughs> oh, droid, yeah. the droid doesn't care about droid lives even more than like any other sentient uh, general we see with the separatists like they usually don't like the droids but like this this droid outright just says i don't care kill all of our droids like after i just like how monotone he is about it like, that's why that's what makes care. it funny. just kill all of our droids that's just how yeah the tactical droids like, talk yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like kill like, hundreds wow. of our brothers it's cool and then we get another funny battle droid moment where uh <laughs> the battle droid sees anakin coming he's all alone and alo security and ahsoka and the clones and he's like Oh, and then he turns around and the door opens. There's a bunch of droids, and he's like, "Ha ha!" <laughs> it's just like that's great. I <laughs> like how the battle droids just like, "Oh God, I'm gonna die!" Oh no, I'm gonna die with friends. But I thought that was funny. Um, and then uh -huh. next we have Anakin's injury, which I don't know about you, but this really, really reminds me of something that happened it on does. Rebels. It really does. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they chose to do inspiration like t took inspiration from the scene for uh kanan in rebels which if you have not finished rebels you, you should because it's amazing um but this is a spoiler for not the last episode but like the third to last episode uh so just really quick i'll say it uh kanan's death is what it homages um <laughs> i know it's sad but uh, yeah, I just thought that was very interesting that it looked almost identical, but this obviously came first, both okay. in the timeline and really. Uh, so. What was he hurt from? Anakin, I'm really this, this, is on what, that. this is what hurt him. The giant explosion! Yeah, he got, like, thrown back, but, like, that was it. He got exploded on! I don't know how his face it, was totally <sighs> fine, but his, his torso was not. Uh, my guess is it would be, like, shrapnel or something in his side from the explosion. I would, like, I'm like, I'm like, because I watched him, like, okay, maybe it's like smoke ventilation or something. I'm not sure. I don't know. That's actually a good question. But either way, he got exploded on, so I feel like his injuries are legit. I also and we're, that's, that's how we're keeping that wording. I don't think that Anakin is, uh, yeah, he got exploded, so it's legit. Um, but I don't think that Anakin would be one to fake injuries, so. But, yeah, it is kind of confusing. Um... <laughs> then I like how you, they they tell you, you Lauren, like, hey, uh, Anakin is like dying. We gotta get him to help. And um, he's like, are all Jedi so reckless? And then Ayla Secura, which is just interesting because it seems almost out of character from what we see for the rest of her. Uh, she's just like, all the good ones are. Which uh -huh. I just, which I thought was funny, but I'm just like, that's that's interesting. Um, then the ship the ship goes to uh, lightspeed. Why? How? How did that happen? I don't understand. I guess maybe okay. a computer shot, I mean, a droid shot their computer or something while they were going. I don't know, but I was just like, okay. that's very odd. Here was one of the big problems I had. Because they're going light speed into a star. Yeah, they managed to stop it. Good for them. But before that, the ship that was following them was like, hey, plot of their trajectory. We're going to follow it. So technically speaking, they should have went into the star. Yeah, um, I don't I don't understand how it worked, but hey, they 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 didn't die from the star, uh, which uh, if you want to wear Commander Bly was like really impatient when they're all like flopping around like because they're you know going super fast and they're like oh we can't turn the power on and Bly's just like what are you doing turn the power on like what are you waiting for like you could just look back and see that they're like you know at the back of the ship like they've been thrown. And be like, okay, but I, I like Commander Bly. It just seemed like he was. I mean, understandably, they are yeah. about to die, so I understand. I hope he doesn't do panic, anything but... bad in the future. Oh God! Did you notice that he has like I don't know if it's tattoos or paint, but he has yellow streaks on his cheeks. 
which I only knew because as a child I had his toy, which had that, but he literally has a yellow streak on each of his cheeks. Like, not the helmet, like his actual cheek, like his actual face. Maybe, maybe Bly relates to yellow and we just don't realize it or something. I don't know, but he literally, I don't know if they're tattoos or if they're like yellow tattoos, which would be very interesting, or if it's like war paint that he wears almost, but I don't know. I just thought it was very interesting as the first we see it because he has his helmet off there. Um... Then my question is, how does the medical droid get completely destroyed in the wreck who is back there with Anakin? But Anakin is totally laying there like nothing happened. He didn't, like, fall out of his bed. He's not, like, in a different position or anything. He's <laughs> totally fine. But the medical droid is in the... the is force. A, is a the force. It's a scrap in the side of the room. I'm just like, what? The force. What? That makes no sense. Um, but, yeah... Then we get the whole debate about the Jedi Code, which this is where this gets interesting, because uh, if you've listened to past stuff, you might have picked up on the fact that myself in particular, I don't really care for um, the Jedi Code, actually. I know a lot of people do, but in particular, I really don't. And in all honesty, this is the first... I don't know if this is really foreshadowing. I feel like they probably had the idea of what Ahsoka's character was going to be. Not necessarily with Rebels, but like on what was going to be her end by the end of Clone Wars. Yeah. Um, so this is almost like the first seeds of... I don't know about the Jedi, uh, but it's her debating Thayla Sakura about how she's like, I need to stay with Anakin. She's like, you know, that's not going to help Anakin. Also, like, the whole attachment thing. So, like, I get the whole thing, like, staying with Anakin isn't going to help him. Like, that makes sense. But then the whole, like... She, Ahsoka asks her, like, uh, how are we supposed to not form attachments but be compassionate? And she doesn't really answer the question. She's just like, I went through the same thing with my master. But then I realized that, like, you got to save more people than, like, than just one life. Like, there's more important things. But, I'm like, you really didn't answer the question on how you're supposed to be compassionate but not have passion towards any individual. Just putting that out there. Um, I, I just want to know, like, how did she realize that? Did she let her master die? Like, yeah, screw you, bro. I'm saving two people instead of you. <laughs> I don't understand why you only have one master then. Like, wouldn't it, like, make sense to, like, pass the Padawan around, like, every few weeks or something? Well, I mean, they kind of did that in the show so far with Luminara and Dooley, remember? And also she gets to hang out with Aayla Secura, not on purpose here, but earlier in the series when we talked about how she was just weirdly with Luminara and Dooley for no reason. And Barriss Safi wasn't, so I'm guessing they traded Padawans. Um, I don't remember this. This is the one where... Uh, uh, I want to say this is one of the ones I missed. Maybe I think it was. I think it was. it's the arc... Oh yeah, this is the one that has the layer of Grievous too, that arc. But it's mainly about the... There's the Gungan Jedi. It's the Jedi, the Bombad Jedi, which is where uh, Jar Jar Binks like, is on... Oh, trying God, to rescue, re trying to rescue Padme from Rodia, and they think he's a Jedi, but he's not. Um, but then they yes, catch. Yes, he is. He's a Sith. Then they catch. Uh, wait, did I say? Uh, I, I didn't say the name. But then Newt Gunray gets captured, and they're trying to transport him, and it's Luminara and Dooley and Ahsoka, which we were like, why is Ahsoka just randomly with Luminara and Dooley? Which I don't think we even mentioned in the episode that Barasafi wasn't. So I'm almost certain that that just means that Anakin and Barasafi. I mean that uh, Ahsoka and Barasafi just traded masters for a little bit for some reason. I don't know. Or Anakin was on a solo mission and Barasafi just wasn't there. I don't know. But either way... A solo, you say? <laughs> either way, it's happened. So there's that. Uh, next thing I have is Rex rocks. Um, the, all, yeah, the Jedi, uh, all the Jedi were taken off guard by one of those creatures. Clones. And the, yeah, yeah, and two, clo two clones died. Yeah. Bly was knocked to the side, and the Jedi were also knocked off guard by... It was really one that pounced on them first, but then a second one came. Um, meanwhile, Rex takes out one by himself. He fights off one by himself, which got okay. the grip on him, too. Like, like, they had Anakin in a tent, like, outside of the crash ship. Why were they not staying in the crash ship? Uh, I feel like if there was any gas left in the crash ship, that would not be good. But they're right next to it anyways. Yeah, but being outside of an explosion is better than being inside of an explosion. I, I'm just saying, like, like okay, yeah, you're not supposed to leave your location if the plane crashes. I'm staying in the plane. I mean, they were really close to it, but I don't know. I don't know. That's a good. That's a valid question. 
But either way, Rex is awesome. Just putting that out there. He fought off one of those things. Meanwhile, everyone else like died and got totally caught off guard trying to fight another one. Yeah. Meanwhile, Rex How did, did it by he... himself. Yeah, like he got hit the same way, and like a clone just got like one shotted after it got like stomped on. But uh, Rex just got, like, got crushed by it, and he just tanks it. Yeah, Rex is like trying to grab his gun, and the thing's like, "No, you can't have your gun." He's just like, "But I want my gun." He's like, "No, you can't have your gun." But I want my gun. Fires gun. Ah! And it runs away. That's essentially how the exchange goes. We don't know what the heck these beast things are either. I don't know the name at least. Um, then we get lemurs that speak English. <laughs> I love that. Too. Yeah. Okay, I have a couple things to run through with these people. All right, go for it. Okay, they said they came there of like their own free will, right? Yeah. How did they get there? They maybe they hitched a ride. <laughs> Second, how are they not constantly killed by the the bird horses? That's a good question, actually. They have no means of protecting themselves. It's not even like they have a wall around their village. Uh, well, they did show, actually, because uh, we don't see it yet, but one of them does take down the... They have a method for taking these things down, actually. Yeah. That's right. So, I guess... Well, like, I if, guess you, better, if you have enough of them, like... Yeah. Either way. <sighs> what are they eating? Where are they getting food? They probably... Oh, they probably eat the seeds for the giant seed pods from the tree. I'm guessing that's Why did they not for. just stay by the tree? Because they, they would have got the crushed by the things. They rolled the seed. They rolled the seeds, like a, like twelve hours away. I'm gonna say eight to twelve hours away. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Where? <laughs> How did they know this planet was safe? But you know what I do like? How they what? they specifically are just like the Jedi are peacekeepers. He's like, I don't care that you didn't start the war. You're the ones fighting as generals in the war. And Ayla's like, but isn't it worth fighting for? And he's like, no, you're killing everyone. That's not worth it. He's like, there's a difference between fighting and killing everyone. Which I was like, that's a, that's a pretty valid point. Now, he, he also, his, the fault in his ways are very much shown later. But, like, I do like how he just calls out the Jedi. He's just yep. like, you aren't agents of peace. You're literally that be, generals. That would be so awkward. Because, uh, she, like, what, what's the Blue Jedi's name? Ayla Sakura. Yeah, she was left alone with them for, like, 16 hours. Like, how uncomfortable would that have been? Well, I feel like her <laughs> and the, the village leader are probably having some interesting discussions slash debates. Because it seemed like she almost had her mind slightly changed by the end of the episode, like, almost. I Like, I mean, they obviously still say that and stuff, but I don't know. It seemed like, to me, that she... Like, was like, oh, I guess you kind of have a point, but I don't know. Oh, I'm just going to keep on killing people. Uh, next question is, um, why do they only have one healer? Yeah. He literally like... said, this is my son. That's So that's a chief's son. How did his son become a healer? I, I guess the old healer died, but still, why wouldn't you train another one? <laughs> he literally meant, like, what? they could have just said, here's a healer. It's my son. Just take and him. It's... But they had to add in the fact that he's their only healer. That's why they need insurance. I'm like, why do you only have one? You need to have this boy teach someone else. I'm so confused why they didn't take Anakin with them when they end up bringing him to the village anyways. Maybe he wasn't good enough to move at all I, beforehand. And then and he like healed him a little bit and then brought him. But I don't know. And the dude's way of healing people is putting juice oil, on special them. Special oil. Yeah. Here's some healing oil. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like, yeah, this will fix you. Oh, like, and he's their problem. only healer. <laughs> it's so difficult that they can't teach someone else to put oil. <laughs> <laughs> what was... What the, what the... How did... What healed him from that? What if the beast thing just happened to grab that guy and run <laughs> off one day? They'd be like, oh, God, we're sick. What do we do? Do we drink the oil? Do we put the oil on us? They, like, drink the oil and die, and it's like, well... We should have trained another healer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the, it's, oh my God. And then I have at the end, I put the last note I have for this episode specifically was a teacher getting schooled because 
I like how Ayla was lecturing Ahsoka on how she was wrong. And then, like, as I just mentioned, basically how uh, the, the chief of these people is basically telling Ayla Segura how she's wrong about the Jedi, which I thought he was much more right than she was about uh, the stuff with Ahsoka earlier. So, Sanir Shakira. It's just going around <laughs> murdering people with your laser swords. Yeah. Oh, also, just a quick side note. If you listen to Mandalore Mandate, and I said that it looked like there was a new Venom trailer, that was a fake, and I was mad. So Triggered! I'm just putting that out there. Uh, but anyways, next episode that we have to cover. Unless, do you have anything da, da, da. else? Do you have anything else? No, I'm just very pissed off about the lemurs' existence. That's about it. Nah, ah the lemurs are awesome. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and they roll. Don't forget that. They roll on their tails. Yes, they roll like General Grievous's speeder thing I, does. Actually, no. Only his son does it for some weird reason. I think I think a couple do it in the second episode during the fight. I could be wrong on that, but I, I thought maybe another one did it. But I could yeah, be wrong. It's, maybe. Maybe uh, it's because he's a healer. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but next episode, Defenders of Peace. Uh, so a quick summary of this one is that they have Anakin at the village. Um, and they're like healing him and stuff, and then There's some juice, and then some separatist shows up. Surprise, surprise! Um, but not because they know they don't know that the Jedi and the clones are there. So they have to. They're like, oh my god, Jedi and clones, get out of here, so we don't get murdered by all these droids. And you know what happens? That is, they get pretty much murdered by all these droids uh, who show up with General Lockdurd, um, who is like there. He's just like, hey, we're here to protect you ransack their village <laughs> um and then he's like yeah there's no there's no republic guns or anything like they aren't gonna fight us and he's like okay we're gonna come back though and do this every once in a while just because we can uh bye and then he leaves and they're all like what why did they do that they're so terrible I, and then and the leader's just like well we can't do anything about it um but i again just quick overview first before we get into it um then basically the jedi and stuff are like all right, so we can't fight for them, we can't we can't help them, but hey, we can get out of here by using the separatist ship. So they spy on the separatists, and they're like, "Oh my God, that is one heavily fortified base for the separatists." Um, then they they send Bly and Rex to go check it out. Whenever the separatists are checking out, they're testing their new weapon, which destroys organic life but doesn't kill droids, and they fire it as Rex and Fly are both down there uh, at two droids actually, and then they're running away and uh, they they escape, and then basically they're like, oh gosh, we gotta go save those villagers because they gonna die. Um, so they go into the base, they steal some shield generators, and then they they set up a wall, they build a wall around the village uh, of the seed pods, and then also set up shield generators, and then they save the day by fighting all them, all them battle droids, and uh, they, they, they save the day, and uh, by the end of the battle, uh, Wag2, I think is the name of the sun, uh, joins in uh, with a couple of the others, finally, and actually fights uh, in the fight to protect the people and then you know the day is saved and everything and i think this is probably about it for a basic recap so getting into it so first off um bly eats fruit and it looked like a yummy fruit because he helped the villagers because bly is nice i just want to point that out it's the first thing you see in the episode he's gonna betray you oh wait wait wait. well it wasn't to ayla he was just nice to the villagers he, not, he ain't gonna hurt those villagers he's, he's just gonna shoot ayla in the back later um lemurs but um the quote I forgot is when surrounded by war, one must eventually choose a side, which um, you think that the chief would the chief doesn't. So like this quote kind of applies, but not really, because the entire people didn't come around. It was just a couple of them like their leader and their still stance by the end was like, let's not get involved like we in the, and then literally after they get involved, he's like, yeah, we lived. But uh, I still wonder at what cost. I'm like, wow, geez. So I don't know how, like, the quote is relevant, but I don't know how much at the same time. There's that, so. Uh, but yeah, then we get introduced to General Lock Durd, who is a super fat Neomodian. I think that's how you say the uh -oh. Neomodian. Um, I don't really care for that guy. Yeah. I, I, I kind of wish Anakin Why is he a general? There. That's a, a really good question. I think it's just because uh, politics. I'm pretty sure. That's how he made like, it sound. Like, even he, he talks about how he doesn't want to be a 
And let's talk about his big super weapon. It's just a flamethrower or like a Molotov. Yeah, basically. Like enhanced chemically, I'm guessing. But pretty much, yeah, that's basically what it is. But um, next thing I have. I like how their plan, whenever they're like, all right, let's, let's not attack the Separatists when they're going to the village. So we can go attack the Separatists after they're done attacking the village. Like, why did they just face off against them then? They weren't even using the super weapon then. And they could have taken the general. I'm just saying. I mean, they didn't know they had a fortified base that they would have to fight later. But still, it's like, your plan was to not fight the Separatists, so you'll fight the Separatists to get a ship afterwards. Like, what? Fight another why, day. Why, did you, why did you delay it? I don't know, but they did. <clears throat> um, I just love that the, Empire, or the, the Separatists dedicated time, like... Yep, there's this desolate planet with literally no resources, but it has a small town of like 30 people that are probably going to die due to disease and dysentery, but we're going to own that. Well, no, that's what I had, but then I realized that the whole reason, you like, Lockdrid says this later, that the entire yeah. reason that he went there was just to test it out on them, so basically it is because, hey, there's just a couple organics here that I can test this weapon on. Um... And I have, why is there a castle here? Now, it's not really a castle, but that is a heavily fortified base. They don't need that much of a base to just test out their weapon on this village. How did, did they you build see? that so fast? I know! I feel like they had a giant ship that basically probably dropped it down. Like, they probably mass-produced that crap, but still, that is massive. You don't need that. All you needed to do was just, like, take a couple tanks to escort your main tank with the experimental weapon and fire on the village. And, you and know, then like, leave. You're giant. Why didn't they fly it there? Like, why didn't fighters have that? That's a really... <laughs> because that would be too hard to fight. <laughs> like, it, it's like it just pretty much just like a big flame grenade. Just load that into a ship and just drop it on the village. Yeah, um, that's a very good point. I don't know why they have it specifically in the tank. Yeah, um, I got no problem. I have no argument for that. I have nothing that can really save that. I think that's a very <sighs> valid point. Um, next thing I have is why does Lockdard give a speech to droids? He is because he wants to feel special. <sighs> but that's the thing is like all the droids are cheering afterwards. And I'm like <laughs> they're literally programmed. Like that's just really sad if you look at it from like an ob oh, observing yeah. standpoint. I'm like he's giving a speech to no one. With droids that are responded to cheer for him. I'm like, that is just I, I just really like that sad. they cheer. They're like, it's like, droids won't be killed by this. Yay. And then he keeps talking. Like, he tries to keep talking. And they're still just going, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> like, I love the droids. They're not listening. Roger, Roger. They're just, yeah, they're just like, yay, yay, Roger, Roger, yay, Roger, yay. And it's like, that's, that's great. I love how they don't care that he's still talking. But then we get Dooku's like, oh, I can't wait for you to test out the, the weapon on uh, innocent people. Yeah, I'm I, so I, evil. I guess that Dooku is just straight up. I feel like that's one thing that the Clone Wars could have done better is actually portray like the, the transition. Of Dooku. Yeah, it, like at least have the transition to Dooku being evil uh, better. Whereas, um, yep, kill those innocents. Yeah, the clone. Like now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think he has many moments where it's like, oh, that's somewhat redeemable, uh, or like I can understand. Like, no, he's just pretty much straight up evil, evil for the entire Clone Wars. I mean, I guess maybe it's possible that he was less evil before the Clone Wars started, but still, the, the character of Count Dooku is incredibly weird and forced if you don't make out the fact that, hey, he was actually good and was trying to be good and then got twisted. Like, otherwise, it's just like, why would Sidious take this really old guy as his apprentice? Like, otherwise, that doesn't make sense, you know what I mean? Unless he was specifically yeah. wanting justice, but whatever. Um, next thing I have, oh my god, the lemurs can send messages by whispering to butterflies. It wasn't like a carrier butterfly. Like, he didn't put a message on the butterfly and, like, hey, take the this horse. message to the villagers. He just spoke to the butterfly and said, tell them this. And it was the force. And we're assuming that the butterfly flew to the village and told them whatever he said. That is interesting. Maybe it was just, like, flap your wings once for this, flap your wings twice for this. Maybe, but still, I've never seen... I, I just gotta say, it's impressive that they have trained butterflies. Or that why every butterfly is Why didn't they have the butterflies just watching them the whole time? And, like, constantly relaying messages? Yeah. Maybe the butterflies aren't smart enough to observe. They can only just repeat what they're told. I don't know. I don't wonder... I don't know! I don't speak butterfly! Damn space butterflies <laughs> talking to lemurs. 
yeah, I feel like that. I, I I like these episodes, but they are weird. The lemurs are talking to butterflies. And I love that, like, when they go back to the village to protect them, Anakin's pretty much just like piss off to the village chief. He's like, "Yeah, we're saving you. Screw you." He's just like, "Yeah, just just deal with it." Also, did you did you hear what uh, Lock Dirt said to the? De- He's like, "Goodbye, Jedi." He goes like, "Oh, is he just trying to rhyme like goodbye?" He, like he emphasized it. Too. He's like, "Goodbye, Jedi." I was just like, "Oh." And, like, what I don't understand is, like, yeah, I get they have all their tradition, traditions and everything, mm-hmm. but you think the village chief of all people would be like, hey, if anyone wants to leave in their ship, now's the time. Because I don't see why running away wasn't okay. Uh, they ran uh, away to this what, planet to begin with. That's what I was thinking, but then he specifically said that they've been there for many generations and that their homes were sacred. He mentioned that later. So Are, are they, like, a week old? What? How I, long are their generations? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they could have been there for a while, and it's just they just know the story of them arriving. Although they said that they came there to avoid the war, which has been going on for a year. So that's a really good point. What's the lifespan of these lemurs? Maybe they do live, like, for a month. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's a, that'd actually be kind of interesting, too, if, like, we ran into a species that, like, their lifespan is, like, literally a month. So, like, they go from uh, being uh, a uh, child to an I've adult. watched the show. Where like somebody's lifespan is a day. It's weird. And like they, they talked about how long they've been like trapped somewhere, and then you figure it out like it's just been like ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. But yeah, like I, I don't know. I it's very interesting. I kinda wonder what the lifespan of these creatures I, is now because or if that's a major I feel like it's not a plot hole technically because we don't know the lifespan of these creatures. But yeah, it's a little weird that um they they said at one point, We came here to avoid your war. But then he's also like, we can't leave this spot because our grounds are, like, sacred. Like, we've had them for many generations. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> how long yeah. do you guys, how long do lamers live for? Like, how does they know what a lightsaber is? Well, I, I guess that they, they were familiar with the Jedi. They knew what the war was because they left, so they obviously know what the Jedi are. But I, I don't know. I guess it's probably just stories they were told or something. I don't I'm know. So um but I may or may not be Googling uh, average lemur lifespan right now. <laughs> it's 16 to 19 years. Um, so that's it's, it's like a dog-ish, a little older, <laughs> like an older dog. So maybe they're like hyper-aging lemurs. I don't know. It's a good question. Or that's that's for the ring, ring-tailed lemurs, if you're curious, by the way, because there's yeah. many different types. I, I know what a ring-tailed lemur is. I've seen Zabuma. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so um, there's that. Uh, last thing I have is, oh my god! Um, so the move that they pull when the the villagers decide to hop in and help in the battle, like Wag Two and the, which is the chief's son, and the rest of them that decide to help, uh, which they they go and join and Wag and the the chief's like, you can't do that. And Wag Two's like, we're gonna die. We have to do it. And then he's like, whatever. And they go and do it. Um, what they do is they like ring them all up, you know, with how they did with the beasts before. And uh, they, you know, they, you know, tie up their feet Knock and then they over. trip, they trip all of them. And then did you notice what Ahsoka did? She just runs over their heads. She ran by and just decapitated like 20 of them, which again, yeah, they're droids. So it's not that bad. But I'm like, imagine if those were sentient beings, like that would be the most savage move ever. If you just knocked all of them down and ran oh. by and decapitated 20 people in a row, just I like th- that. <sighs> I just, I just realized, love, and I was just like, oh, gosh. I just love how they're like, oh, crap, they got a couple of battalions, and then Anakin just freaking tanks them all. I know. That's great. I, I, I love how it's like, <laughs> who do we send to go fight the most important part, like the, the part of this battle that matters the most, like that will kill everyone instantly? Let's send the injured guy. Like yeah, the uh, injured guy just, to fight the battalions. He's running, I was gonna say he's he's running like 20 miles an hour. And I'm just like, jeez. Jeez. But and then he 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 captures Lock Dirt, who's like trying to run away, and he's all fat. And I wish he would have killed him. I mean, knowing Anakin, I feel like it's not a stretch that he probably killed him off camera, because Anakin he used does them that. As slaves. Anakin Anakin does that later in um, the Clone Wars. He he just kills people like whenever it's a dramatic moment, like specifically in the arc with us, Satine, and Obi Wan. And they're like, there's a terrorist on board, and they're like, oh, if you kill me, you're a hypocrite because you're a pacifist, but you're a Jedi, so you can't kill me because I'm unarmed. And then Anakin walks up behind him and stabs the guy. 
<laughs> and, and they're all just like, Anakin, he's like, who's going to blow up the ship? Like, what are you talking about? Like, I had to kill him. But he didn't, like, cut off his hand. He just killed the dude. So I'm like, I feel like it's reasonable to assume that Anakin killed Locke which I don't like Locke so I really hope he did, but we'll never know. We never see him <sighs> taken prisoner in the village, so I'm just saying. And they, ne they never use the super weapon again. Well, that's because Anakin cut it all up. Oh, yeah, but you're saying that, okay, Locke designed it, so yeah. I feel like the Lockdard's either rotting away in a prison somewhere, or he got killed because um, yeah, there's the yeah the separatists. Didn't Nobody the else in the separatist army can be like, hey guys, let's put like oil in a canister and blow it up. Or maybe they just realize that like, wait a minute, this is this is just a flamethrower bomb. <laughs> let's just make let's just make flamethrower droids. Do we ever we get flamethrower troopers later? But I don't think we ever get flamethrower droids. Now that I think about it. Dun, Maybe dun, we do. Dun, Cad, Cad Bane does. Django Fett. Like, that's a common bounty hunter thing. And uh, and like I said, we get flame troopers on the second battle of Geonosis, but I don't I don't think we ever get... Uh, which is odd, because you'd think that robots would use flamethrowers on humans instead of humans using flamethrowers on robots, but... That's kind of interesting now that I think about it. Maybe maybe they do, and I just can't remember it, but yeah. You're welcome. But uh, yeah, basically, all you need to know is... Uh, Ail Secura and the lemurs disgrace. And then at the very end, the chief's like, they're all like, yeah, thank you, Jedi, for saving us. And the, and the lemur's like, yeah, but I still wonder at what cost. Like, Yeah, like, what was he implying? <laughs> like, yeah, they're going to come back just to kill you guys. Honestly, that's what the Jedi implied was going to happen to the pirates if they stayed there. That's true. So, there is that. Count... Uh, Although that was Count Dooku in particular, yeah. so... But still, I, I'm kind of curious what the fate of that village is. Because if they die later, I'm like, yeah. No, die. no I like suck. that he says that, and then like they're all serious, and then um, the Senate shows up. <laughs> like, they're the ones that are going to kill them. Oh, yeah, I wonder, because I was like, do they know what Republic ships look like? Because those, those lemur people could be thinking, like, oh, God, we're about to die. The entire <laughs> fleet just showed up. Like, the entire fleet just showed up. We're about to die. I feel like they should have been like, oh, that's our ride or something. Because, like, otherwise... Those Libra people have no idea if those people are there to kill them or not. <laughs> like, wouldn't you and be alarmed? Like, were, the, were the Separatists following Anakin, or did they just happen to be there at the same time? The Separatists just happened to be there at the same time. They were testing the weapon, and basically it was just convenient timing that the Jedi landed there around the oh, general that's time. That's stupid. Because that's what they were saying, is they were like, how do they know we're there? And then they're like, wait a minute, no, they don't know we're here. Like, that, that, they definitely don't, so I wonder what that is. But... Yeah, so that's about it for these two episodes I can think of. Do you have anything else? No, I ranted enough about lemurs. Yep. Uh, so, uh, if you like this, definitely check it out next uh, next week as well. We'll be diving into... What's the next story arc, actually? It, it's I don't the blue, know. I think it's the Blue Shadow Virus arc, now that I'm thinking about it, which I haven't watched those... I think I've watched those episodes once that? ever. I think they're on Naboo. I think Jar Jar's in it. I think Padme's in it. I don't know. I I can't remember this one that well. I think it's two episodes. It might be three. But I I, know I just really a virus. I just really don't want to watch all the zombie ones again. The zombie ones? Do you mean like With the, the Geonosians? Oh, why? Because it hap it happens like two or three times. Yeah, they basically they finish that arc and then they repeat that arc, but in space. But, like, literally with the Geonosian Worms, like, it's immediately after. It's not like, oh, it's a similar thing afterwards. Like, no, they literally just use it the same thing again. But anyways, um, so, yeah, definitely check out next week. Also, our sister show, Mandalore Mandate. We had our second episode, which has already gone up by the time this goes up, uh, in which we talked about lots of solo stuff. Also, uh, a bit of J.J. Uh, Abrams on the original idea for Ray's parents. Uh, like the entire solo trailer basically was the main thing, and lots of merchandise for that. And then also a bit of an update on the lightsaber, what we said would be the best lightsaber. Da -da -da. They're, they're, the crystal does matter, apparently. Um, thanks to Stupendous Wave, he brought that up, which I totally forgot about. Should have known. Thanks, guy. But, um, yeah, uh, there's that. Also, Steel City Bots had a new episode recently, episode 31, which we talked about. Uh, we mentioned the fact that, hey, Thermidor's in Star Wars now. There's some third-party news and stuff, too, which so it's interesting. Might as well go check that out. Um, misaligned, there was the most recent episode had Christabel on, which was about Exodus. And uh, the new episode will be going up probably, I think it's the day after this that it airs. Um, 
which should be about the Cybertron video game, so War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron, and also Rise of the Dark Spark, because it takes place in between. Uh, and I think... Wait, no, I'm missing something. Oh, TF Primecast. I keep forgetting that one. Uh, episode 3, we finally got that recorded again, uh, in which Aaron and I discuss um, episode 6 and 7 of Transformers Prime, which is Skyquake's episode, which is actually, that's a fairly big deal. That's a big episode. And then the Scraplet episode, which is the opposite, where it's not a big deal, but there is one moment that inspires endless, endless fan art and shipping of Optimus Prime and RC because of one particular yes. moment in yes. that episode. I love so, like, I love shipping. So, really go do. go listen to that if you're curious. I will. Um, I will. I, I'm actually dead serious, though. Like, I obviously, you're going to get fan art from everything. But there is so much fan art because of one particular moment that happened in that episode. That's, like, the only thing that's really memorable about that episode. Other than a couple of puns that are hilarious. But, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm trying to think, is there anything? Oh, and Awesome Asylum, the most recent episode, we talk about Marvel Legends, uh, and also the uh, Hasbro verse uh, in comics ending. Uh, this next week, we should have some interesting Infinity War toys to talk about, and maybe some other stuff, too. We'll have to see. I will gladly so. rant about Infinity War. Well, it's not the movie, it's specifically the toys, but you don't oh. worry, I have an idea for what we'll do for Infinity War, because Infinity War is all the different heroes coming together, and I was like, huh, what if we did an Infinity, Awesome Asylum Infinity War that's like everyone from Nerdy Geek Talk that we can get to talk about the movie? I just think that'd be interesting. But, we just have John dress up as Thanos. Yes, and John can shave his head for it. John, <laughs> you, you need to learn dedication. Uh, but yeah, so uh, you can find all of those shows by subscribing to Nerdy Geek Talk on YouTube or any of your favorite podcasting places, Google Play, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podbean, all that good stuff. Nerdy Geek Talk is the network that we have, all of that. Um, also, you can follow us at Nerdy Geek Talk on Twitter, where I tweet out basically when episodes go up and stuff. And you can find me personally at Eric Crowbar on Twitter. I like Star Wars a lot. I don't tweet about it a lot. Uh, what? Other than uh, mainly jokes, because I don't really like Star. I, I don't want to say that, but I don't like the Star Wars fandom a lot that I'm that I've seen. So I prefer people that engage with me, and I will gladly engage with you. It's just I okay. don't go out of my way to talk to Star Wars fans. I'd prefer they talk oh. to me because if you're someone that talks to me, I like that better because I know I can talk to you. Whereas if I just put out a Star Wars opinion, there's a billion people on the internet who are going to tell me I'm an idiot and wrong and hate me and everything, even though I'm actually pretty knowledgeable in Star Wars. But I have fairly unpopular Star Wars opinions. So there's that. Um, and also at Aramus Prime, E-R-I-M-U-S Prime on Instagram, if Instagram is your thing. But that's not really Star Wars. That's mainly Transformers. Although there was a Star Wars death squad lately that guest starred. <gasps> Yeah, and you stop putting it on Snapchat, so I'm I sad. did actually, but maybe maybe I'll start putting it back up. I've gotten a couple of people to complain. Just, but... just just send it specifically to me. I don't care about the rest of the people. I want it. All right, all right. <laughs> for you. Uh, and Luke, where can people find you? You can find me at Twitter at Darth underscore San sixty six, where I respond to any question Eric asks. I don't know if I like like retweet them. Or, like, he can actually see what I say, but he likes it a lot, so I think he does. I see what you say. Awesome. But I was I was saying with a question mark. <laughs> no, I, no, I mean, I don't, <laughs> see you, I don't see you tweet out very often, but my, my timeline's pretty busy. But I use, anytime I do see you tweet out, I I'll usually... I'll start talking about random stuff, because I like Star Wars, I like Marvel, I like comics. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to talk about on the interwebs. So, uh... If you ever want me to rant about comics, I'm ready to go on that. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's about it. Um, so, sorry, I was, I'm just ma making a joke for, uh, Luke. Uh -huh. But anyways, uh -huh. Uh -huh. um, you can also find John, who's not here, unfortunately, but should be back, um, at Darth, I think, underscore Forge. We talked about this. I still haven't checked. I think, it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's underscore Forge. If not, it's Darth Forge. Either way, uh, there's the link in the description. Um. So go check out his stuff, too. He's a big star fan as well. So all that. And, yeah, that's about it. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.